Hey, 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 this is Lovey Ajayi, and welcome to episode three of Rants and Randomness. I am the Side Eye Sorceress, and this is my podcast where I talk about pop culture and all things relevant to our lives. I am here at the Chicago Recording Company working with Sav Media to give you guys these hot podcast episodes. I'm excited because Rants and Randomness gives me the opportunity to rant about whatever's bugging me about the world, which is always a lot of things. Uh, Spotlight something random that I'm loving because I can't help but share the things that I think are dope and interviewing amazing people. And today's guest is Vanessa DeLuca, editor-in-chief of Essence Magazine. So let's jump into it. First of all, I am super thankful to everybody who's been showing this podcast love. Y'all have been rating it all over these platforms, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play. I need all your ratings, so thank you for that. And the most surprising feedback I've gotten is that my voice is calming and soothing. I never knew. I never thought about it. Um, People keep on saying it sounds like, somebody said it sounds like Earl Grey tea at the end of a tough day. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to take it. Uh, I'm just really uh, excited about this new thing that I'm doing and having the opportunity to tell good stories, talk to really good people, and just come with y'all. So, oh yeah, shout out to one of my friends, Yvonne Orji, who said that um, (laughs) if I ever need to switch careers, I can because apparently I could be a phone sex operator with this voice. You know, It feels good to have options in my career, I must say. Shout out. Yes, I know I can always pivot. So, (laughs) but yes. So, you know, I like to bring you a feel-good moment. The feel-good moment of this week has to be Little Parker. So, she's like this little three-year-old girl who went to the National Portrait Gallery to see the picture, the the massive portrait of um, First Lady Michelle Obama. And her mom posted the picture on social of this little girl just enamored by this portrait that she looked at Queen Michelle. And her mom wanted her to turn around to take a picture, and she refused because she just wanted to look at this gorgeous portrait. And the whole internet lost its mind because the picture of Parker basically, like, mesmerized, kind of gripped everybody because it just showed that representation mattered. So... Uh, the people of BuzzFeed actually interviewed Parker and her mom. And when they said, what, is, what do you think her name is? Parker goes queen. Let me tell you. Almost out of the cutes. It was so adorable. And in that moment, you understand the power of when you see somebody who looks like you in a grand place. So Parker ended up getting to meet Flotus Michelle Obama. And they had a dance party, and they tweeted pictures, and they clearly had good conversations. And it was such a good moment. I think in this time of dumpster fire everything, when every day we're seeing bad news, things like this are necessary to keep joy going and to keep us with some type of hope that the world is not just an awful place. So thank you, Parker, for making us all smile and bringing some awesome into our world. So my rant this week is about texting. I basically own my young old status in that although I am of generation social media and texting and all phone everything, there are still certain things about our habits that I sometimes fight. And one of them is texting. I'm not a huge fan of texting. That shocks a lot of people because I end up sending a lot of texts throughout the month by necessity, but I actually don't like it. Sitting there looking at my phone screen, this small phone screen, even though they're bigger than they used to be, and having to type all these letters to people actually disrupts my day. First of all, it means I have to move away from whatever I'm doing in the moment to go do this one thing. Another thing that I don't like about texting, I think I got lazy. Because remember back when we had to use T9? (laughs) When to, like, get a C, you had to press the button three times? Well, now you don't have to do that. But I realized I still don't enjoy communicating mainly via text especially if the conversation is long. When people send me texts that's like, what time are you going to be there? And I have to type in 1 p.m. That's easy peasy. When you're asking me, like, how are you feeling today? And I have to write you a soliloquy. I'm not here for it. I'm the person who has actually become so bad at texting that sometimes people will send me something. I look down at my phone, somehow get my attention span broken, 
And then realize four hours later that I never replied to this person. And then I end up feeling bad because I'm like, dang, they probably think I'm ignoring them because here I am on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter doing all the things, but I haven't replied to them yet. It's because I forgot. My bad, friends. You, I'm confessing my terrible, terrible habit. Um, and I know, like, right now everyone's all, you know, texting's convenient. Sometimes you can't talk on the phone. My whole thing would be I will hold the conversation and say, you know what? How about this? Let's talk when you have time. Like. Me texting people to find out how their day is going is usually not a good conversation because even after I asked the question, I forgot I sent the text. I'm I'm basically a delinquent. And I use a Samsung phone. So Samsung lets you do the whole swipe where you you just have to kind of move your fingers across the screen. And even that, I'd be like, oh, how many words do I got to type? I don't know when it happened, but I think... There, there came a point where it hit, like, a critical mass for me. And people would send me texts and be like, hey, I texted you three days ago. And I'm like, oh, snap. My bad. I'm trying to get better at it. Um, on my birthday, I got, <laughs> I think I got, like, 200 text messages. And I instantly got overwhelmed because I was like, I have to reply 200 times and type how many words. For me, I can type on the computer all day. So one of the apps that I use the most is WhatsApp because I'm Nigerian. Africans love them some WhatsApp, okay? Like, <laughs> it's because it's easy. When you're out of the country, you can use this, this application over Wi-Fi to still get people back home. But the day my life changed is when I realized WhatsApp had a desktop app. So I have a bunch of groups in WhatsApp that's like my Voltron squad. I got, like, my family is in WhatsApp. That's the only place where I am responsive in text because usually I'm in front of my computer and I can actually type replies back to people. The times when people don't get any replies from me is when I'm on the go. Typing all this stuff is a pain in the butt. And people do whole relationships over text, and I don't know how. I do not understand how folks are like, yeah, we've been texting back and forth all day. Listen, the way my attention span is set up, I'm not the one. Pick up the phone. Let's figure it out. So I end up, if I realize the conversation is getting long, I'd be like, hey, yeah, what are you doing tonight? We should, we should, we should call each other. And folks be like, you actually want to talk on the phone? Yes. I enjoy it. We can get whatever we need to get out of the way in five minutes as opposed to an hour-long text conversation. So this is basically to tell my friends and my family that um, when you text me, please expect delayed responses. And if you do not get a response, text me again. I love you. Blame it on my heart, not my mind. And blame it on my laziness. Yes. So... Text me with um, that expectation in mind. Govern yourself accordingly. So my randomness of the week is my love for Essence magazine. Y'all, this magazine means so much to me for so many reasons. One, of course, the obvious that it represents black women. It centers us. It amplifies our work, our beauty. It says that I see you and this is for you in a world where a lot of times we don't see ourselves represented. In the magazine industry, you can name a thousand magazines and most of the time they won't have black women on the cover. So for Essence Magazine to exist um, and to have exist for such a long time is special for us. It's necessary, especially right now as a lot of black media is being shuttered this magazine is now officially Black-owned again. You know, it used to be owned by Time Magazine, I think, since, like, 2000. Um, and now they just bought it back, and and executive team has equity. That, I celebrated so hard about that because for a long time, anything Essence would do would be colored by people being like, oh, they own by Time. No, now it's back to us. So this magazine, beyond that... Just the platform, right, and the things that they do and the spaces they create. One of the spaces is the Essence Black Women Hollywood Luncheon, which is their annual luncheon that honors black women in in media, in TV and film who were doing amazing things. And I've had the privilege of going to this thing since 2012. It's there that I got to meet Shonda Rhimes for the first time. It's there that I got to meet Lupita Nyong'o for the first time. It's there that I found out that... One of the biggest costume designers in Hollywood is a black woman, Ruth Carter. That event has been special to create space for black women to also, like, congratulate each other and say, like, I see you, sis. 
And for me, it's just one of my favorite places to go every year. Essence also does the Essence Fest in New Orleans every year. That is a three-day, basically, summit of noir pixie dust. And it's like talks and vendors, and you can enjoy food, and you basically get inspiration for three whole days. And that's open to the public. This year's um, July 5th through 8th, I'm speaking on the empowerment stage. But it's also like a vacation for me. Because a lot of times I go to cities, I'm there for a day for business. I get to be at Essence Fest for four days to just really enjoy the the city, to enjoy the melanin magic that's all over the place and the, the concerts. Essence keeps creating these spaces that are important for us to kind of be like, whew, I could be exactly who I am right now in this moment because everybody else who's around me is exactly who they are. I just think it's a really important cultural marker. Uh, right now, everybody's talking about, you know, black women and trust black women. Essence has essentially been saying this since it started. So it's not a trend. It's what this magazine represents, the storytelling. And I just think now we have to support black outlets. Again, there's a dearth of them. So many times we'll find out, oh, this person's not publishing anymore. So it's important for us to put our money where our love is and subscribe to the magazine. Um, go to Essence Fest. Um, read the stories on social media because Essence.com is popping too. A lot of stuff you see on there you never see in the print magazine. Um, but yeah, so it's something that's been an important part of my journey. And they're always supportive of my work. And I am just grateful for the existence of outlets like Essence and Blavity and The Grio and The Root. So, yeah, you guys, show it some love. Give it some clicks. Put some money when you can. And be a part of Black media and support Black media. All right, now on to my guest interview. So I am excited that my next guest is Vanessa K. DeLuca, and she is the editor-in-chief of Essence Magazine, which is the preeminent lifestyle magazine for African-American women. I mean, everybody knows what Essence is. Come on. And I wanted to have uh, Vanessa on this show because she is a woman who I look up to. She has been a quiet but strong voice in my head, kind of like cheering me on in this journey. And I think her wealth of experience as this woman in this powerful position and st telling stories and amplifying stories of black women makes her just the best type of unicorn. So, hey, Vanessa. <laughs> hey, wow. What an introduction. I That's mean, awesome. you are amazing. You, <laughs> <laughs> as, I, as are you, of course. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even read, I only read the first two sentences of your bio and I'm just like, Lord, Vanessa, who? You are magic, okay? Shoot. And you've been in this business for like 15 years? For, yes, for, for quite some time. But, you know, I was a career changer, so this wasn't my first um, ch choice for a career, believe it or not. Um, what was your I first choice? Uh, actually, I wanted to go into fashion. I wanted to um, be a fashion buyer. So when I, when I got out of college, I um, worked... Uh, for retailers, and um, I did eventually become an assistant buyer um, for Macy's and then went into product development, and I did that for, like, about seven years, but it never really clicked. Like, you know when you're doing something and it feels like the perfect fit? Well, this did not <laughs> uh, at all. Um, and, I, you know, I knew eventually I was going to have to make a change, so what happened is the company I was working for decided to relocate to their main headquarters in St. Louis, and I either you could move with them or you could look for something else. So I decided to stay where I was and, um, and to go back to school, and I went to NYU Summer Publishing Institute. Okay. And I took classes there um, in book and magazine publishing because people from the industry taught, you know, would come and speak to the classes. So, and also because they had a job fair at the end. So I figured, oh, okay, well, this will give me an opportunity at least to meet some people in the in the business and see if I can get work um, in, in magazines. And that's how you, what was your first magazine? Uh, Glamour Magazine was my first 
um, well, I did a, I did like a, an internship for no money, practically, basically for bus fare, um, at this magazine called Spy. I don't know if anybody remembers Spy magazine. Is that the Matt TV really, one? It was a, no, it was like a cool, um, very sarcastic, um, very tongue in cheek, um, publication, actually great and Carter, um, most recently in Vanity Fair was one of the people who created Spy. And, um, and I just worked there for a little bit just so I could kind of get my feet wet. And then while I was there, people from Condé Nast called me and said that they had an editorial assistant job open at Glamour and that I want to come out and um, come and you know, try out for it. So, so I did. Yeah. Wow. And, and then you went from there. Yeah. And then I just went from there. I mean, fortunately there was at first, you know, they were a little wary because I was much, of course, I was like in my thirties. So, um, you know, they're like, you really want to do what an editorial assistant does. You really want to get coffee and pick up petty cash and do Xeroxes. Um, you know, like just the grunt work. And I was like, absolutely. And I really did because I knew that this would be just kind of a foot in the door and I could figure out the rest of it from there. And how many years between that and you ascend into editor-in-chief of Essence. How many years? I want people to understand the journey's not quick. Uh, no, not at all. I mean, that was in um, 1993 Whoa. when I started. And so here we are <laughs> in 2018. Oh, my um, God. It's, yeah, it's been quite a journey. But I have to tell you, every single step of the way has been um, just another an important step in building the foundation, right? So, um, I mean, through the course of all that I've been doing, I've literally worked in almost every single department of a magazine. So I was a lifestyle director. I did fashion and beauty. I wrote stories for Center of the Book. Um, you know, I did reporting. I, I, knew, I knew every aspect of the book. So by the time, of course, I was a longtime Essence fan, um, you know, longtime fan of Susan L. Taylor. And so, you know, even, you know, even when I didn't get, um, didn't get uh, like a position that I may have wanted at the time, I was still always learning. And I just felt like eventually my time was going to come around. That's so important because I think right now people are so, they see the glow up, right? And they see you at the helm of this incredible magazine not understanding that you touched every piece of it before you climbed up that ladder. Yeah, no, I think it's really important that, and I try to tell, um, you know, the young people that I meet and the young people in the office how important it is to have a strong foundation because you know what you know, right? And if you rise too fast, you may not get the, the complete skill set. And then when something happens or, you know, there's a char- problem or changes need to be made, you may not know how to handle that. I felt like I was able to watch a lot of my predecessors in different roles and how they handled things um, and how they, you know, how they managed a team, how they were creative, how they collaborated, all of those things. And you can learn a lot from that if you take your time. You know? Yep, yep. So I I was listening to the Yes Girl Essence podcast, and Mm -hmm. y'all called the office the Black Girl Magic Headquarters. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. How does it feel to do that every day? Because you are in a place where everybody basically looks like you, and you basically are the exception for that. Yeah, listen, I, I fully, I love it. I love getting up every day and going into work knowing that, um, not only the audience that we're serving, which is black women, but that there's a community of black women in the office that I get to see every day and really focus on how are we doing, not only doing our best work, but how is everyone individually getting an opportunity to grow, to do different things, um, to, to get excited and be excited about the work that we're doing for black women. And now Essence is back to being black owned. Yes, yes, what yes. What is that? I am so it's, thrilled. Oh, my, let me tell you something. I mean, I, the, when we made the announcement on January 3rd um, that we were going back to being 100% black owned, which we haven't been since, I want to say, um, the year 2000 is when we first started the partnership with Time Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we made that announcement, 
the social media um, just uh, explosion that happened, people were so excited, yeah. thrilled, happy. Like, I think we even underestimated the um, the feeling that people mm-hmm. had about um, the brand not being 100% black owned, about yeah. ha- being tied to a more mainstream um, organization and that how that might affect us, you know. Um, and even, no matter what we said, even though I, I really, to be, you know, completely um, truthful, there were many, many stories that we've been able to do as a part of Time, Inc. that they could have said no. I mean, mm-hmm. they could have said no to a mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter cover. They could have yes. said no to the um, Woke 100. They could have said, no, you're not doing that. But they understood that we play a role in the community that's not necessarily the traditional um, journalism, but we're advocates as well for the community. Yeah. And, and we have to, it's our responsibility to to step in and be a platform where the conversations, like hard conversations, serious conversations, and conversations that can help us should be had in our in our pages, on, you know, on on every platform that we serve. I mean, listen, I when I saw that and I was like, "What? This is we needed this moment." I feel like that's why we celebrate. Yeah, so hard. I mean, it's all kind of it's it's really this um, feels like another new black renaissance happening. Yes. I mean, yes. that people are finally in many different spaces and positions to make green lighting decisions to to green light things to make things happen without relying on someone else to make it happen for them and that is happening in our community and i think what's so exciting to me is to see the examples that so many people like the ava duke renee's of the world and the ryan kuglers and the you know um all the people who not only are making great art but also making sure that our um, our kids and the people coming behind them have opportunities too. Making sure that women have opportunities, like mm-hmm. Ava with the Queen Sugar, um, all the directors being women. I mean, these are important steps to to take, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and now we get to now we get to make them. It's it's, it's really extraordinary. Look, I, I the first thing I was like, okay, so at Essence Fest 2018, can we do an electric slide? Group electric slot. I was dead serious. I was like, I-, I need them to understand. When I tweeted that, I was dead ass serious about it. <laughs> well, I think they responded. I saw a tweet back saying, yeah. "Oh well." It was like, yeah, definitely. I think we need to know. I mean, honestly, I feel like this is the the year. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
the melanin, really the going, melanin levels are just going yes, to be. Yes, and of course, Mary J. Blige, oh. you know, it's just, it's just going to be insane. Who, last year's concert that she did at Essence Fest, like, she left it all on that stage. I'm she talking. She absolutely did. Mary looked the best she has ever looked and gave the best performance I have ever seen her give. I agree. It was, I mean, the whole place was lit up. And it's it's not easy to have a, a, the whole a whole super, um, you know, um, super dome crowd, yeah. Yeah. like in the palm of your hand, like literally like loving everything that you're doing. But she does it. She just, she's our, you know, she gets us, right? And we yeah. get her. And every, I think especially after everything she's been through, mm-hmm. everybody really wanted to show her that love and support. And you felt it from the audience. And I'm just, I, I always say like my, one of my forms of resistance is being around black women. And because black women offer this extra oomph of I got you that nobody else does. And for you, like, I remember back in 2014 when you saw me at the Women's Media Center event and you said, where's your book? And I was like, uh, you're right. Um, I need to write a book. <laughs> and the, the next year you were like, so where's your book? And I was like, I actually just finished it. And then the year after that, I actually gave you my book. Yes. Yes. And it, I mean, you can, it's, it's so, to me, it's so important that when you have something on your mind, you feel a certain way about what someone is, you know, is capable of doing that you should just tell them because you never know where that's going to go. So I, you know, we barely knew each other. I just knew you from following you in social media and reading your blog and everything. And when I really got to, you know, meet you, I was like, this this is a no-brainer. Like, this is what you should be doing. Like, I know you're going to make it happen, right? And then to see it evolve and grow and become a New York Times bestseller, by the way, um, is just amazing. But, you know, sometimes you need those voices. I think everybody sometimes just needs someone to say, hey, you know what? You, you could do this. You got this. And yeah. I knew that you could. Yeah. And your voice was one of the ones I would hear, like, where's your book at? And I'm like, you're right. Wait, Vanessa's asking. She's going to ask me about my book again. I got to <laughs> get on it. So who are your voices that you hear in your quiet moments or in the moments where you need to get pushed up and onward? You know, I mean, first and foremost, my mom, um, who, you know, is one of my um, best friends and, and biggest champions. And, you know, she's always told me, you know, that I could do anything I set my mind to, even mm-hmm. when I didn't think it, mm-hmm. that it was possible. Mm-hmm. So, um, and she does, she does that to this day. Also, you know, I, um, I have some, you know, a very small circle of friends who I can talk to when I'm really questioning, you know, um, are we headed in the right direction? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Um, and they tell me the truth, you know. Um, or and and I think that's I think that's really important. It's, if you have like just a couple of really good friends who aren't afraid to tell you the truth, and you have a family that supports you, um, you're really fortunate. And I mm-hmm. and I feel that way um, very much. So when people come to you for advice, what is it typically about? Oh, wow. It's about some of everything, quite honestly. Um, Well, I mean, because of this role, a lot of people come to me asking for advice about the business, how to get in the business, how to get, you know, people want to get in the magazine. I mean, you know, people want um, to be part of festival. I mean, there's lots of those kinds of asks. But then there's also people who come to me and say, listen, you were a career changer. How did you do it? How Mm -hmm. did you go from this one, you know, you were in something for seven years and then you made a complete 180 and then started over and for no money and, 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 you know, and, and still was able to make it. So how do you do that? And I'm always happy to tell people those stories because, um, you know, it, it, like you said, the path is not always it's not always straight, and mm-hmm. and there's no one way to get there. And people need to know that sometimes it is a struggle. I mean, I, you know, tell people all the time that I didn't get this job right away. I was passed over two times, mm-hmm. and I could have just said, you know what, I'm not 
doing that. <laughs> I see, give see, up. I need, I you, you know what? I need, you to, I need you to repeat that piece because people see the you now and they're like, oh, my God, repeat that again. I, I was not – I tried out for the role of editor-in-chief of Essence twice. Hmm. Um, I did, you know, it was like, basically it was like a bake-off. There'd be, we'd have to do tests and edit tests and, um, you know, submit the, our vision for the magazine and all these things. And it was a process and interviews and it was a process. So I did that twice and got turned down twice, <laughs> but still, you know, still ended up getting, a, having a role at the magazine and just learning what else I needed to learn in order to get to that next, you know, that next rung. I didn't give up. So Um, somebody else would have quit. What made you not quit? I just, there was something in my gut that that told me that this was for for me, that Mm. I knew that I belonged at Essence. I mean, I even left Essence for a little while, a couple of years, and then came back um, as an executive editor again under a different editor-in-chief. Because I missed it because mm. I, I, and I, I truly believed that I hadn't spent, I was like, I didn't spend all this time working all these other magazines, working Glamour, working at Life Magazine, um, going to Columbia Graduate School of Journalism. I didn't put all this work in to not then take this, these skills and apply it to a publication that I absolutely love, a brand that I love, and to be, you know, and a brand that serves our community, serves us, and is so important to us it really felt like I was meant to be there. And there were a couple of times that I would interview um, over the years at Essence, but it just was never the right time. And then finally it did become the right time. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's important for people, people to know, like sometimes the closed door doesn't always mean that it won't open again. Mm, yes, come through, gems. <laughs> yes, because I think a lot of people, in e- in, because of ego, we'd be like, ah, forget it. Eh, I'm not doing it again. But you yeah, kept n- at it. N- yeah, no, I mean, and, and, and I think what I think also was, was a part of it is that when you are working with, in such a unique situation where you're working with um, black, mostly black women, people of color, people who are really good at what they do, um, who are so dedicated to an audience that you love, and you, and you, and you think about going to another environment where it's not like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Think about going to an environment where people are constantly questioning your ability mm-hmm. and your um, your capability, your creativity, you, what you bring to the table. It's like you're weighing that. And, yeah. and it's like, okay, which situation do I think for me holistically and for my own self-worth and, right. you know, peace of mind is better for me? And I felt like if I, you know, I can, I could still be at Essence, maybe if I'm not in the top role, but still make an important contribution. Yes. And, you know, so that's, that's kind of part of why I stayed, you know. Can't nobody say you ain't fight for it. <laughs> <laughs> can't nobody come for your car, you know, right? <laughs> that's right. That is right. No, right. it's like definitely it. put in the, put in the work. Yes. So I'm, I always wonder too, what is your superpower? What do you think is your superpower? Ooh. I think my superpower is collaboration. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. I, I'm, I've am i always been the kind of manager that wants to hear from different people's points of view. Not, not everyone has to agree. But I always feel like our ideas are, are made so much stronger when we collaborate, when we ask, you know, someone who may not necessarily be coming from your same, you know, space, what do you think about this? How do you think? And it never fails that when we do that or when I do that, it's always better. I always want to collaborate with other different organizations and other groups, you know, because sometimes we're a lot stronger together than we are just trying to make our way on our own. And, um, you know, it's. I think it takes, you have to have a lot of, um, patience and humility and willingness to be vulnerable um, to collaborate because um, otherwise it just doesn't work. But yeah, I think that I would say that's my superpower. That's fair. And then what do you do to take care of yourself as you run this magazine that matters so much to the culture? Ooh, wow. Yeah, I will. I definitely 
don't do enough. I should do more. <laughs> like um, everybody else, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm just tell, t- t- telling the truth. But, you know, I like to, when I'm not at work and I'm not, you know, traveling, I like to be at home. I like to yes. cook. I love to cook. I have a culinary degree. What? I love to. Wait, yeah. you have a culinary degree? <laughs> I have a culinary degree. <laughs> you buried the lead? Um, what? <laughs> When that that period of time I told you when I wasn't at Essence yeah. for a while, I was doing um, like a whole food thing. I I went to school part time on um, at nights and weekends to get, earn a culinary degree for like nine months. Because that's oh. something I always wanted to do. I started doing a food blog. Um, I start it, um, I started um, doing food photography for a website and writing um, you know different um, foods foodie stories, and I did that for a while and ended up, because of that, getting a job at uh, General Mills um, working on their websites for a a little bit. So that was like my little detour, my little foodie detour. (laughs) Um, But then eventually, like I said, I really wanted to come back to Essence, so I did. But I still enjoy cooking. Like, I love having people over and entertaining and cooking a good meal. And I also love the movies. Like, I can binge watch. I'm a Netflix binge watch junkie. Yes. It's it's ridiculous, you know. (laughs) But... But it takes me out of, you know, it takes me out of that headspace of always thinking about work and what's yeah. next. And, and everybody needs a break. Everybody needs a, a guilty yep. pleasure. Yep, yep. And that's, I, I, I want to find out from everybody how they're taking care of themselves. Because I'm also terrible at it. So I'm always like... <laughs> <laughs> like I know, you are constantly on the go. I'm like, when do you have time to, girl, to, 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 to you know, just, just be? I'm also the girl who, when I'm finally home, I'm home. Like, I think... This is my first time out the house in three days. Like, wow. because I'm actually in Chicago. I was like, nope, 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 not moving. So me <laughs> sitting on the couch in my auntie robe is my biggest self-care <laughs> moment. Yes, yes. No, it, yeah, I mean, and, it, and it, it, it can be that simple. Like, I mean, I think people forget, like, some of the basic, most, you know, simplest things, um, crawling up with a good book and, you know, making some hot chocolate um, yes. or, you know, just watching a good show and having a good laugh, that's important too. That yeah. That is my favorite. That is my favorite <laughs> thing. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for the support you've offered me over the years. Like, I'm talking, you've stepped up to make sure my book helps or you, Essence Magazine did all types of, like, features on me. I've been at Essence Fest. For me, Essence is such a huge part of my journey, which is why I decided to... Um, also dedicate this episode to talking about my love for the magazine and the work of all the women there. So you've been such an important part of my journey. So I just want to say thank you in case you didn't know. Oh, thank you, Lovey. I mean, you know, it's been a p- real pleasure and a joy. You know, I um, one of the things that's important to me is using our platform to make sure that people discover talent and get to see our talent um, wherever wherever it shows up. And it shows up in so many spaces, right? Yeah. And that's part of what we should be doing for each other. Yeah. Well, I see you. I appreciate you. So much respect for your work. You already have a built-in cheerleader in me. Whatever you do, I am <laughs> here rooting you on. So thank, thank you, for, you for even joining Rant and Randomness as my guest. Oh, my pleasure. This was fun. Oh, man, listen, I found out some new stuff. I'm over here like, wait, you have a food blog? Let me, girl, listen, get me together in in the kitchen, okay? (laughs) So thanks, Vanessa. You're dope. Oh, thank you, Lovey. So are you. Take care. See you at Essence Fest. See you at Essence Fest. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Once again, shout out to Vanessa DeLuca for joining me on this episode of Rants and Randomness. She's so dope, y'all. And she's also all over social media. Her username is Vanessa underscore K DeLuca on both Instagram and Twitter. So that's V-A-N-E-S-S-A underscore K-D-E-L-U-C-A on both Instagram and and Twitter. And of course, follow Essence everywhere. They're at Essence on every platform and Essence.com. And much love to Chicago Recording Company and Sav Media for partnering with me on this podcast. 
As always, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Stitcher. We're working on Spotify. And uh, please rate it, too. And I need your ratings. Those matter, and y'all are doing it already, so thank you for that. And you can follow me on social media at Lovey Everywhere. That's L-U-V-V-I-E. See you on the next episode of Rants and Randomness.